Oh, I just sent it. Everybody should get it. We'll wait another minute or so. But in the meantime, let's introduce ourselves. Barbara, see, we'll only do one, but let's introduce ourselves to Barbara. Barbara, why don't you start by introducing yourselves to us? Where are you from? What are you looking to get out of this class? Okay. 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 I'll keep it short. Um, I live in Washington, D.C., where I've lived for um, almost 10 years. Um, my husband and I relocated from Tulsa, Oklahoma to be near grandchildren because uh, they weren't coming back. Um, and uh, we were retired, so it was time to move. Uh, the other group lives in Philadelphia, and so it's easy for us to see them. Um, I grew up in a very small town in Kansas. Uh, I had, uh, we belonged to a reform congregation in, in uh, nearby St. Joe, Missouri, which to which we seldom went. Um, and I had no formal Jewish education. I had a couple of years in Sunday school. I never learned any Hebrew growing up. Uh, I visited um, my uh, father's family. My mother's family uh, was not interested. They all were Jewish, but nobody was interested in Judaism, particularly, uh, except for Hanukkah and Passover. Um, and uh, we visited my father's family a lot in Tulsa, uh, where my gr Orthodox grandparents made sure that we met Jewish children. And uh, that's how I met my husband. And um, uh, I, so I married into a conservative family. And uh, uh, we moved around a lot, where, but wherever we moved, he had family, I had family, but we were always connected to his family because they were much more religious than mine. Uh, and uh, uh, we brought, then we settled in Tulsa and brought our own children up, uh, reform slash conservative, because um, those were what were the options in Tulsa. And um, they were, both, both of our sons had a bar mitzvah. And um, I was working the whole time, so I never really had the opportunity to get engaged fully in learning Hebrew, although I sort of by osmosis got a lot of it. And uh, then after the boys were gone, uh, I tried to learn Hebrew, but I didn't, I, I, it never took. And um, then we moved here in retirement and I tried taking Hebrew, but uh, because I couldn't drag my husband to services, I never really utilized it. And uh, so I've been, pretty serious about it this uh this time around so here we are okay good well i uh i hope you'll like the group we are all kind of i think a lot of us are in the same boat whether you know never got a chance to study hebrew or some of us studied hebrew as you know younger and are trying to refresh ourselves and get ourselves back into it um you know that's a more of a mix of that so marcy why don't you do a little intro let barbara know a little bit about yourself and why you I'm, I'm Marcy Weinstein. I live in a suburb east of Cleveland, Ohio, um, in the snow belt, where right now we have no snow, which is very interesting this year. And um, I kind of the same thing. I was confirmed. Both my brothers were bar mitzvahed, but my parents in those days, they didn't really believe in females getting bat mitzvahed. So I never learned Hebrew. And I try and go to services at least once a month, I belong to conservative shul, and um, I was always lost in the service. So my initial game is to try to be able to just at least find where I am in the Hebrew. <laughs> I'm getting better. I make sure I sit next to people who know Hebrew, and I say, get me started, and then I can follow it. But they're always yep. still, Lemar, going too fast <laughs> and trying to increase my speed. <laughs> Eventually, someday, I'd like to have it. Our temple does adult bat mitzvahs, but you have to know Hebrew first. So um, that's where I'm at. And the Hebrew word of the day that Judy put me in charge of, I do every day. But a very interesting Lemur point, I um, was speaking with a person, actually a temple um, last month who was a linguistic expert. And I was saying to them, you know, why, I'm, why am I having so much trouble with this? I'm, I, I was a four point student, whatever. And he actually said that up to age 12, it's much easier to learn a language and after that it's a lot tougher and i'm because i'm trying to remember the words of the day just as an aside and i don't do very well with that but i'm trying i'm determined so um a couple of my friends are surprised that sit next to me how far i've come in one class i said i have a very good teacher <laughs> so that's me and just as a personal aside me more i'm going to be here next week um, I'm leaving, God uh, willing, March 3rd for Disney World. So I, and then I have to go to about Mitzvah in Pittsburgh. So I'm going to actually miss three weeks in a row. So please try and remember to record them because when I get back, I'm definitely going to try and catch up. 
definitely, definitely. And I'll go, I'll go over a little bit what we're going to do over the next couple of weeks so that you know. Judy L., talk to me. Talk to us. Tell, introduce yourself to Barbara. Hi. Um, I, I live in um, Saratoga, California. And so I'm just finishing my coffee, <laughs> as you all are ready. Um, I grew up in an um, Orthodox synagogue, but my family was not at all Orthodox. And so I, did, I went to um, Sunday school and I had a confirmation, which they were doing at that time in our synagogue, but I never did go to Hebrew school. And so I kind of... Um, managed my way through by learning just by memory things. And like Barbara, um, I had a couple of attempts to take Hebrew and never followed through for one reason or another. And I decided at this age, I was really determined. I really want to learn. I want to be able to go to the synagogue and and really be able to follow along uh, rather than just whatever I happen to know. Um, I'm having a little bit of a um of a struggle to have the time to study my my husband has been ill for chronically ill with um cancer for uh, several years and has a lot of um issues now so i'm dealing with caregiving and at the same time we have joy um we have our first grandson grandchild who's um going to be 10 months old this month and so um I am juggling trying to go visit him and taking care of my husband. And I just decided I'm going to stick through this Hebrew and um, do the best I can. Good. And you know, because the classes are free, you can always say at the end of the semester, Limor, I really didn't have time. I really want to retake the advanced beginner. And you don't have to move into the next level. You could stay back in advanced beginner and learn those things again you know, not an issue. And that's the same thing, Judy. If you're finding that you're lost after the first week or two and you want to go back to beginner, we can do that too. So just communicate with me, you know, privately, whatever, and, and we'll make it work for you. Thank okay? you. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, this is supposed to be a life skill, not anything where you're getting a grade. We're not, you know, <laughs> we're not telling the world what's going on. Nobody cares. It's all I, for you. So it's I appreciate up. your support. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Anne. I'm Anne. Um, I am from Tampa, Florida. And um, <laughs> I told my husband last night, well, my Hebrew class is starting again. I'm going to strive to be like the slowest person in the class one more time. But uh, that's my own fault because, you know, I, I think that I, I, I'm falling back on patterns of when I was younger and learning, I could just, you know, do things at the last minute. So um, I haven't, my, it's my own fault. I haven't been practicing <laughs> my, I'm going to strive to practice more this, this time around. And, um, and my, the reason I took the class um, was because I, I'm a Jew by choice and I had to learn enough Hebrew um for my conversion to read the the opta and uh that was it um so i learned it and um and then that that was that was it um and then i i tried to pick it up again when my kids were um were teenagers but you know got busy dropped it um, but in the meantime, my husband became very, very active. When she, we go to a conservative show, he became very, very active. And he reads Torah every week. He's, you know, they call him, you know, his nickname is Torah Man. So you can imagine what I'm facing here. So <laughs> I thought, well, maybe I need to, I, I would like to be able to go to services. I know so many prayers by heart, but I would like to be able to actually go in and rather than just recognizing a letter or two, usually I can recognize enough letters to kind of figure out where I am in the, in the service, but want to like maybe recognize some words. So um, that, that was my purpose for taking the class. And, um, you know, I know it's an individual thing and I'm, I'm happy with the progress I've made. I, what I, I hope I 
I, I hope that uh, I can make a little bit more this time around too. So forgive me when I stumble. But all I'm, good. And you know, you yeah. can always say, listen, today I'm not up for it. Don't call on me to read. You can, you know, email me or text me before class or chat with me privately or just tell me in front of the class, whatever you want. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not that. shy. I didn't do my homework today. Exactly. So. Everybody's on their own journey. And if you're yeah. just looking to follow along, you, you don't right. have to read out loud, you know? So everybody's going to be in charge of their own journey. So it's all good. All right. Okay. Um, you did. Yes, Judith or Judith? Judith, Judith. Though, although it's Judith, it's Judith, but I I go by Judith. Um, All right, Judith. It's Hungarian. Tell, me, so. tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, why you're taking the class? Yes. Yeah, so um, I live in uh, in the Washington D.C. area in uh, Virginia, Fairfax County, and um, I'm Canadian uh, and been in the U.S. for about ten years now. Um, I'm trilingual, so I like to think that I can pick up languages quickly, but Hebrew has been one of those projects, just like Anne mentioned, and some others, like, you know, I learned Hebrew for my uh, bat mitzvah, and then it sort of stuck for a little bit, and then I lost it. Um, I had, a, um, in towards the end of high school, beginning of university, done a kibbutz ulfan um, in Israel for a month, trying to just learn to speak Hebrew, but um, lack, you know, I think lack of immersion is it, with it with lack of immersion, it's very difficult to learn a language. Um, and so now, I I grew up going to an ortho, a modern Orthodox synagogue in Canada, and now um, go to, just joined a um, conservative synagogue in Virginia, and we go almost you know every other week. And I do feel like I'm a little bit embarrassed because everybody is seems to be super, uh, super fluent, super uh, great at reading and reading uh, Torah. So I'd like to just keep up with my peers here. And um, okay. yes, that's it. And oh, I, yeah. you know, my own future uh, list of excuses is I, I have had a lot of work travel um, crop up. And so sometimes I'll be traveling or out of town on a Friday and, and then hoping to still be able to make the classes, but. So just so you know, the way that I run the classes, first of all, they're all recorded and I can show you how to get them off the off the Women's League website. I also will send a class recap, um, sometimes on Friday, sometimes on Sunday, sometimes a Tuesday morning, people are like, where's my recap? And that's fine. Um, but but I love I like the reminder. So I'm not saying that to say anything, but and I'll send a recap saying, here's what we covered, you know, and here's what we're going to do next week. So that you have an idea of if you weren't there, what we've got, if you have something coming up that, you know, you're not going to make class, you're going to know what we're covering, that sort of thing. Okay? That would be very helpful. Thank you. And, and constant reminders on how to access the recordings. I really appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I'm available to you whenever, like if you want to text me during the day on a Wednesday and you want to access it, I'll hop on the phone with you if I'm free and get it done. So don't worry okay. about that. Thank you. Judy Schwartz. <laughs> I, I'm another Judy and not a Judith. Um, I'm from New Rochelle, New York. And I wanted to take this because I never really got, got the vowels, even though I did an adult bat mitzvah, but memorized a lot. I grew up reform, but we, my husband was um, conservative docs. So we belong to a conservative synagogue, which is just part of our lives, my life now. Um, and I've just been enjoying all of this. As Marcy said, she's gonna be away. My kids are in Disney right now. Um, I'm going to be in Washington DC in March. So I'm hoping at the hotel, I'm gonna be able to join class. And um, and as Marcy said, Lamore is really good. <laughs> Great class. Thank you. Lamore, so, I, I wanted to say something that in your introduction to me, I don't know if that went to other people because I'm new to your class. You mentioned that you have one of your younger child is a freshman at Michigan State. Yes. I hope I hope he's fine. So I was going to start with that. So my son is fine. Thank God, physically, you know, emotionally, we'll see what happens. He was about a half a mile away. He was in his dorm the whole time. They were locked down in the, 
They were told to barricade their door, shut their window shades and lock themselves in the bathroom. So they were locked in the bathroom by themselves for, you know, by themselves, four guys <laughs> um, for five hours. So, you know, listening to the police scanner, texting back and forth with me, you know, um, you know, when, you know, there was silence for a couple minutes, so maybe 10 minutes, we hadn't texted back and forth. And then all of a sudden he texted, I love you. You know, my husband and I were just in tears, like, oh my God, he's scared, you know. So the ordeal itself was very scary. And I was up till two in the morning that night. And then since then, I really haven't slept much um, because I'm trying, well, he came home Tuesday night and I've been trying to like stay up and talk to him to see how he's doing. He brought a friend home with him um, who um, his parents are away in Europe. So he had nowhere to go. And so I said, just come. And, you know, so he's here too. And um, then last night, um, this girl that also goes to Michigan State, but is from New Jersey came up and you know I was in the in the kitchen making challah she's like oh I'll help you and she came into the kitchen and you know she's all a flutter talking 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 I'm like oh does Elon feel that way and she's like oh yeah Elon said da, 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 da. and I'm like oh good so I got a little bit more information from her as to how he was feeling I think he's just kind of like you know you know he's avoiding the whole conversation you know and that sort of thing and I think that once they get back to campus this weekend um, you know, emotions will come up and things like that, but physically he is fine. Thank God. And he was, you know, he was never in danger because he was so far away from it. But we lit, but like I said, we were listening to the police scanner and they kept saying, oh, sh the, um, reports of shots fired here and there. And so we're on our phones on the map of campus looking, we're like, that's kind of close to him. That's across the street. That's whatever. So it was, that was harrowing. But, um, so I had to open with that. Um, and thank you. So some of you reached out to me. Thank you very much. Um, very comforting to know everybody's looking out for us and our well-being as well as our kids. And, and that's what this is all about. Like we're here, we're here to make friends. We're here to learn together and, and, and develop a bond and we have. So I, I really appreciate it. Um, okay, so this semester, Advanced Beginner Hebrew really is going to surround now that we know how to read and maybe not fluently and that's okay. Now that we know all the letters and whatnot, um, and if we need a review here or there, we will. Um, we are going to learn the Friday night service at synagogue. We're going to learn the Friday night service at home. We're going to learn the Saturday morning service at synagogue. Okay. Um, and in between, I'm going to throw in the Haggadah because we have Pesach coming up and you know, if you, if you, you know, and I don't know what you guys do. We'll talk about it another day because we've already taken off a lot of time with the introductions and whatnot, but I want to know from you, what's your Seder like? My Seder is like, read the thing cover to cover, da, 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 da. And so, you know, my kids went to Jewish day school and we called it, um, you know, the festival of our tuition dollars, because we'd have the kids open up the, the Haggadah and read in Hebrew. And we'd be like, oh, they learned a lot. They're doing great, you know, and show off to the grandparents and the cousins and all that stuff. Um, so we're certainly not going to read the Haggadah cover to cover. So over the next, I have, um, I'm going to show you my, I'm going to show you my, I'm going to share my screen and show you kind of my, oh, oh, I never made myself a host. Shh. <laughs> They're like, host hasn't let you share the screen. I'm like, but why not? I am the host, but I guess yeah. I wasn't. Okay, now I could share my screen. And I'm gonna show you, um, this is my like lesson plan, right? So I don't know that we'll get to all of this today. Um, and, uh, but we're gonna do Kaddish, the blessings for Al Aliyah Torah, like when you go up to the Torah, we're going to Adon Olam. We're definitely not getting to all this today. Adon Olam, Friday night Kiddush. Then we're going to go, what I like to do is I like to go backwards, right? So we'll go from Saturday morning backwards and we'll do Aleinu and Ein Kelohenu because I feel like those of you that go to shul and get there late, those are the two things that you're that you're there for. So we're going to start backwards because not everybody's there for Pasuke to Zimra and that's okay. Right, the lights are flickering in my room. Hopefully the power doesn't go out. Okay. Yeah. We'll go through the Friday night structure of the, of and, and when we do these prayers, not only are we going to read them, we're going to talk a little bit about what they mean. Why do we say them? That sort of thing. 
Um, do we stand? Do we sit? You know, what's important about this? Uh, we'll go through the Friday night structure of the service at synagogue so you understand where we're going and how we are so that you know if you come into Friday night service and you hear Lecha Dodi, you know we're almost done with Kabbalat Shabbat and we're about to start Mariv, right? And what that means. So, because uh, because I want you to be able to, my goal, after you're in here and intermediate, my goal is that you walk into any synagogue, you listen a little bit and you go, oh, I know where we are in the service. And you could hopefully open up the Sidur right to that spot. Again, if the Sidur is your Sidur and not a different Sidur and all of that, right? Then we're going to work for, you know, three to four weeks, depending on that, on, on the Haggadah. And I want, I'm going to need from you what you want to work on. Okay. So if you want to learn Dayenu, if you want to learn, um, you know, the songs at the end, if you want to learn the blessings that we say right before we eat, we have all those blessings with the matzah and the maror and the, all that, like, well, we can go over those, like whatever, whatever you want to do. I don't have any specific curriculum to do, but I have a great Haggadah that, that has big lettering and I'll, I will scan it in, send it to you and I'll flip it up on the screen too, for you to see it. And then we'll just go again, like through everything. We'll go Torah service. We'll do all of this stuff. And as you see, I have two more weeks of stuff that I haven't put anything in there, but any time along the way, if you're like, you know, I really do want to get to this, let me know because we will get there. So, Lina, yeah. Is there any way that you could add the ashray to that? Because they, my in my congregation, the 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 canter sings, but then we we do it you know alternatingly, and yes, that's one of the things I'm totally lost on because they go fast, and I was going to ask you if we were going to do that. So maybe at least I can follow it. Okay, we'll throw that in there. See how easy that was? So perfect. Okay, so um, so that's what we're going to do. Um, if there's anything else you want to learn, you let me know. Um, I always feel like Kaddish is a great place to start when we go to Advanced Beginner because you, you need it at some point. If you're not already saying it, you need it at some point and it's good to have. The same with the Aliyah Torah. You want to know the blessings of how to, you know, Baruch Adonai Ham Barach. And if you're going up with your husband, that's great. But wouldn't it be nice if your voice was heard too? So, um, so those are the two things I like to start with. But anyway, all right. Will you so, send a copy of the schedule just so we have an idea? Uh, I can, but that's why I do the recap in next week because I sometimes move stuff around. Okay. Depending on where we're at and what we're doing. And if we have a, you know, week that we're, you know, or if I decide, you know what, we're going to skip this because we've spent more time on something else. So, um, you know, again, the class is really dictated by what you guys want to learn. Mm -hmm. So if you tell me you really, you know, you really, really, really want to learn something, then maybe I'm going to move that up in the schedule okay. so that we don't go in the order I wanted to go into. That's fine. You know, if we never get to Pasuke to Zimra on Saturday morning, that's fine too, you know? Because, you know, I would say half the people in my shul don't show up till after that. So um, matter of fact, when my daughter had her bat mitzvah, you know, you get there early and whatever, whatever. And my husband's not, my husband doesn't like the shul part of shul. My husband's like the talking and the food part of shul, right? And that's fine. Um, and so we're sitting there and, um, you know, he's flipping through. He also does not read Hebrews, flipping through and I... He's looking at my page and I flip through and I'm pointing to him where we are. And I gently leaned over and I said, this is called Pasuke de Zimra, you know, like, and he's like, shush, you know, he'd yeah. never been there. You know, he had never been there for Pasuke de Zimra. So, um, so you had no idea what we were doing and Pasuke de Zimra, sometimes you flip through lots of pages, you don't do the whole thing. And so you really have to, you really have to, you know, be at your shul and know what pages you do and what you don't do. My shul does like, you know, everything you can do. And we're still skipping 20 pages at a time here and there. You go to other shuls and they do like the first three prayers and then they skip to the last three prayers and then they do shahri. So it really depends. Um, okay, I'm gonna share my screen. We're on page 67, which is a review page. Um, and- I'm sorry, Lamar, did you- uh, is this a PDF that we're using or, because I know in your intro email, you had mentioned some Siddors. 
Um, right. So before we get to the Sidur, I'm just going yeah. over the Shalom Aleichem text from last from oh, last year. Okay. So if okay. you don't have it, that's okay because I'm popping it up on the screen. Perfect. Um, but yeah, and then we'll get into who's got what Sidur, and you'll see I have I have links to the online ones. If you don't have any Sidur, I will give you the links that I have, and you can use them. They're free links. They're um, one is from the Cantor's Assembly, and one is from um, a synagogue in Northbrook, Illinois. Um, that just happens to have good PDF, you know, easy to read, good PDFs to scroll through for the Sidur. So um, I see Anne like on top of the uh, computer. So I'm going to try and make it bigger for everyone, um, including myself. My, you know, my screen's over here and I'm like staring at it. Okay. So I'm going to assume that you can all identify these letters, right? Right. We're going to remember that the Aleph is silent. It's going to take on whatever vowel is underneath it or to the to the uh, left of it. Bet, vet, without the dot, it's a vet, right? And my trick here is that um, the B has a ball in it and the vet does not, is vet, the ball has vanished, right? So B and V. If you need a little, uh, a little um, cute way of remembering, Gimel, Dalit. Now the Dalit looks a lot like the Vav or the Resh, right? I'm going to scroll down to Resh. Here's the Resh. See that Resh? Yep. Now I'm going to scroll back up to the Dalit. The Dalit has a little kind of a hat over to the left, maybe like a little, I don't know what you want to call that, but they look very similar and they're very easy to mistake one for another. So if you mistake one for another, it's fine. I'm just letting, you know, giving you the heads up. Hey, Vav. And now let's remember the Vav again, looks like a race, but it's a little, um, it's a little shorter. Let's yeah. see if I can get the both on the screen. I can't. Nope, I can't. Um, the race is the race is longer on top, whereas the vav is a little shorter, right? Mm -hmm. Also, if you look at the vav and the nun, the nun has a little floor on it, or yeah. you know, feet or whatever, and the vav doesn't, mm -hmm. right? So those can be confusing sometimes. Um, Zayin, chet. Tet, Yud, Yud, again, looks like the Vav. It's just a lot shorter. And in this font, it's a little curvier. You know, and again, every Sidur is going to have a different font of, of sorts. So, Kaf, without the vet, without the dot, it's a Chaf. At the end of the word, Chaf Sofit, right? Which again, might look like a Resh, but it goes under the line of where the other letters stop. That's how you can tell, but it also looks a little like a nun, right? But it's got a longer top on it. So, um, so that's how you could tell those apart. Um, Lamed, Mem, and the Mem Sophie comes at the end of the word. And look at the Mem and the Samach. They look very, very similar. The Samach is a little bit rounded on the bottom. Um, and that you're never going to find the Samach, you're never going to find the Mem, in the, the final Mem in the middle of the word. Mm -hmm. So if it's in the middle of the word or at the beginning of the word, you can be confident it's a Samach. Okay. Uh, mem, Nun, and the final Nun. We talked about those a little bit. Samach. Ayin. Now the Ayin and the Tzadik don't really look alike when you put them together. But when you're not looking at them together, Sometimes you forget. The ayin kind of looks like a guy who's leaning back, right? With his hands kind of up. The tzaddik is the guy leaning forward, okay? So you can kind of remember that. Um, pay without the vowel fe, I mean, without the dot fe, and fe so feet at the end of the word. Tzaddik. Sadik Sofit, Kuf, Resh, Sheen, when the dot is on the right, 
seen when the dot is on the left, also very confusing, and taf. And taf with the dot and without the dot, we, the Ashkenazim, I'm sorry, we, we pronounce in modern Hebrew them the same. When you talk about modern Orthodox Ashkenazic pronunciation, they will pronounce this one without the dot as a s, right? If you've ever been in, a, in an Orthodox shul, you'll hear them say the Kaddish, Yitzkadal v'yitzkadash, even though it's Yitzkadal v'yitzkadash. So if that is your, if that is your tradition, then by all means, that's acceptable. Okay. Um, Oh, and I forgot to say that the ayin also is silent except for when there's a vowel. So now this next page, any questions on that page? Anything that I said that makes no sense to you that you have questions? Okay, you can nod your head because I can see you even though you can't see me, I have two screens. So you can nod or you can raise your hand or whatever, I can see you. Okay, the next page, 68, is the alphabet and they tried to group them so that we could talk about them like this. So again, the uh, anybody wanna tell me, how about this, interactive? Anybody wanna tell me why the Aleph, the Ein, and the He are together on one line? What are they grouped for? Because they can be silent, they're silent, the He is silent at the end of the word. Correct, excellent, gold star. All right, the Bet and the Vet. The dot. The dot, yeah. Now moving over to the uh, left. The yud, the vav, and the final nun. Oh, I went over, I just went over all this, but that's okay. Well, let's review. It's good. The yud, the vav, and the final nun. Do they look similar? They look similar. They all have a short top with varying lengths on the vertical line, right? So that's why they're together. The vet and the vav, why are they on that line together? Same yeah. sound. Same sound. The chaf sofit, the nun sofit, the face sofit, and the tzaddik sofit. They're all long. They're, they're all, they all end, they're all at the end. Right, they're all at the end of the word, and they're all long, okay? Sorry, would you mind doing a quick review on those as far as like what sounds they make? Yep. This one, you can see my cursor, right? This one is a ch. This one, n, 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 n. This one, f. And this one, s, like pizza. Okay. The dalit and the resh. The tops. The tops are a teeny bit different, but other than that, it's the same. That's one that trips, I think that one trips people up the most. Um, cha, final cha, final mem, final nun, final fe, and final tzadik are just all final letters. The he and the chet. Almost the same shape, but one has an opening. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. This is uh chaf chaf mem mem nun nun fe fe tzadik tzadik. Beginning middle. They just all have so <laughs> right. These pairs all make the same sound, even though they're different letters on the page. Um, we said vav and vet, so vet and vav is the same thing. Bet vet. Kaf, chaf, pe, fe. Dots. Dot and no dot. Dots and no dots, right? And we already just reviewed the taf and the saf, quote unquote. So we'll, we'll leave that alone. Chet and chaf. Same sound. Same sound. Tet, taf, taf. Same sound. Same sound. Okay. Kaf, chaf, chet. Kaf, chaf, chaf, sofit, final, chet. 
sound. Same and similar sound. Yep. Kaf and kuf. Sound. Same sound. Mem and final mem. They're the same. Except mm -hmm. Final mem and samech. Same letter. Very just, sim they look very yeah. similar, but they make different sounds. The mem you'll find only at the end, the final mem you'll only find at the end of a word. So, okay, let's see what else we have here. Samech and sin. Oops. Same sound. Yeah. We already went through all this. Um, okay, vowels. What are the first two here? Uh, uh, what are the second two? A. A. The third A. one? E. E. The fourth? O. O. The next one? O. o. And the last one? O. O. I don't know. Vo, vo, vo and o. O. and o is that one, right? It's o and o, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you remember how I told you that I that I remember these o, and if somebody punches you in the stomach, o, right? Right? That's where the little ball is. So those are the good, you know. If you need those mnemonics. Or the not mnemonics. If you need those hints, that's where they. That's 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 where they are. Okay. And the chamats katan, this the the bigger ah uh, is right. Each all? sidur is going to be a little bit different. How it shows the chamats katan. So Barbara and 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 Judith, you know, the chamats katan. This is called the chamats. The one that I'm circling here it looks like a little plus. And sometimes that doesn't say ah. It says all. Oh, it's an exception to the rule. Right. It happens um, in every word that is kaf and lamed because it's kol. Oh. Um, and then there's other ones. And you'll see what when we go through the sidur, I'll point out this is a kamatz katan, this is a kamatz katan. Okay. Okay. There was one other one too, Lima, wasn't it? If there's a yud or an what was it? The a, the a before the yud, and that becomes i. I know there was. I was always confused on it. There was a rule on that. Um, it's gonna have the aleph with a line under it, and then the yud. So it's gonna say i, right? Okay. Sometimes you pronounce the yud as of as as a y. Sometimes, like this, it's part of a vowel, and you don't really pronounce it so much. Okay. Yud. Right. Hmm. Um, okay. So I think we'll start Kaddish. I don't think we'll get to the whole thing, but let's start it now. Um, tell me, let's go around the room. Tell me what Sidur you have. Okay. Barbara. I have the Lev Shalom. Okay. Perfect. Marcy. I have the Lev Shalom also. Okay. Judy. Same. Okay. Anne? I have both. <laughs> so I'll go with whatever the maturity okay. has. <laughs> and Judy Schwartz, what do you have? I have Lev Shalom. Okay. Shalom. And Judith, what do you have, Judith? For the, for, I'm sorry, for the Sidor. Oh, Sidor. I'm sorry, the Sidor. Yeah, I don't, um, I don't have one, but I can okay. buy, I can order one or bring one from my synagogue. I, I guess yeah, I ask your synagogue to borrow one, but I will be flashing it up on the screen. So, okay. um, and uh, and what I will do in the um, in the uh, recap email, I will send you the link for the Lev Shalem. So if you can't get it from your synagogue, you can no. follow along with what everybody else has. I mean, so I have, are, those of you sorry, I have a modern Orthodox Siddur. Does that one have the same? Prayers that we're going to have on. the same prayers. So if you, I just don't know what page. So yeah. I don't know what page to tell you when we're going right. to some. Right. Yeah. So if okay. you can find it, that's good. Which <laughs> which modern Orthodox do you have? Um, I have. Uh, my gosh. Um, you want to show me the cover? The Mazora series. It's, it's uh, the art, you have the art scroll. 
Yes. Okay, so I have an art scroll somewhere. It might be it might be in, in my basement, but I'll find it. Okay. What I'll I will do is I'll create a chart with all of them on it so that you can just go to your page. Oh, thank you. Okay, yeah, no problem. So I'm sharing with you, um, obviously this is, you know, um, again, uh, during the pandemic, um, there were many, um, many synagogues that put their, their CDORs online. Um, using it for educational purposes. Um, and this was, you know, not behind a wall that I had to um, put a password in or anything like that. So we're using it, um, just so you're aware. Okay, so I'm gonna make this bigger because I certainly can't see it. And we'll go to the Hebrew part. Um, so, you know what, before we do the Hebrew part, and maybe we just won't do the Hebrew this week, we'll do it next week. But let's talk about the Kaddish a little bit. If you look at the English of the Kaddish, so let me share the screen again. If you look at the English of the Kaddish, of the translation, right? Um, and this is the mourner's Kaddish. This is being said by someone who is a spouse, child, parent, sibling, right? Your immediate family. Those are the people that say Kaddish. Sometimes someone dies, there's nobody to say Kaddish for them. And this was true. Um, and this is true in the Orthodox world. Um, but this was true back when we didn't recognize women saying Kaddish, that let's say someone died and they had two daughters. Well, who was going to say Kaddish for them? So there would be a righteous person in the synagogue who would take on the responsibility of saying Kaddish and you would give a donation to the synagogue and they would say Kaddish for you, right? Um, uh, case in point, my mom and her sister, um, and my mom's a secular Israeli and so is her sister. And when my grandmother died, um, my grandfather died also, but when my grandmother died, they didn't say Kaddish. And so my son took on the obligation of saying it for his grandmother in the honor in, in his great grandmother in the honor of his mother. And that was something my mother really, you know, felt was like so respectful and so wonderful. And, you know, and for him, it was like, well, I'm saying I'm, I'm going to shul anyway, I might as well say it, you know. Um, nowhere in this prayer does it say anything about death about mourning or anything related to um, what you might think of when you're when you're either in your year of mourning or on your site to say. Um, so take a look at this. Why do you think, you know, just just why do you think this is what we're saying? What it, you know, why are we, we're just praising God here. Why? I always wondered. <laughs> I, never, <laughs> I never did understand why. Today's the day, Marcy. Today is the day. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so, because he was the one who brought us forth and gave us life. Yeah, I mean, but that's for any occasion, isn't it? Why specifically when you're mourning, when you're in because this period? you don't period, want to forget the person and you want to keep them alive in your heart. Right. But there's nothing here that says I will keep alive in my heart, yeah. you know, my parent, my whatever, whatever. Like when you go to Yisker, yeah, that's being said. But why here in Kaddish, which you're going to say for 11 months after your spouse or your parent passes or 30 days after your child or sibling passes, why are you? Why I can tell you why I thought, why I, I never Passing. asked. I should have also tell asked my rabbi, think. I never asked, but I always interpreted it as being that, okay, you're in mourning and, and you're sad, but life goes on. God is still with you every day. You're reminded of how great God is and that he, you know, he, uh, uh, reason for everything and that, um, you know, this is how God is meant us to be, even though you're sad. Right. Yeah. I mean, I guess we can look at it that way as well. Um, I think my, my interpretation is, um, 
Hold on, I'm going to my notes here. Can I offer one? Um, yes, please. Just like the idea that there's godliness in everyone. And so when someone passes, it's, you know, it's a prayer to really, I guess, affirm the faith of in, in, in the godliness and sort of evoke that which is less of because. Yeah, because I mean, I mean, that's good. Um. Um, but I, what I think is, um, so I'll, I'll give you like the official reason and then we'll kind of go into it. After. So they say that the Kaddish became a prayer for the mourners because in Talmudic times, it was customary to study Torah during your mourning period. Right. And so this is a way, um, and, and at the conclusion of, e of every time that you um, finish a passage of Talmud or finish studying, you say a learner's Kaddish, okay? And so they shortened that Kaddish and made that a mourner's Kaddish because it was kind of the tradition of what we would do on those days. Um, and then, and I'm reading, by the way, from this book called Bechol Levavcha, which is actually a reform uh, uh book of um of explanations and i kind of like it because it gives a little bit of a simpler explanation as opposed to um you know some of the more religious books will you know cite you to different places and you have to kind of come up with it on your own so i like this because it kind of lays it out um okay the legend of rabbi akiva it says that he once came upon a man carrying a heavy load of wood wandering about in the cemetery he asked him what are you doing here are you a man or a demon? The man replied, I am dead, but I have been condemned to carry wood in the cemetery. Well, what did you do? Asked Rabbi Akiva. Why have you been condemned to such a fate? He answered, I was a tax collector who favored the rich and oppressed the poor. Akiva then inquired, is there no way that you can be saved from a terrible fate? The man replied, my if my son will recite the Kaddish, I will be saved from this punishment and I will rest in heaven. It is said that Rabbi Akiva then went to go find the son, taught him the Kaddish prayer and that the man finally came to rest in peace. Um, so, you know, is that, so then I ask myself, um, is that a story that they created so that people would say Kaddish or is that, um, you know, a story and that's how it evolved this tradition of saying Kaddish. Um, and I don't know, but what I do know um, from my own um, my own experience when my father died is that especially in those first seven days when you're really exhausted because you have Shiva and you have all these people coming in and out and all this stuff and you really don't have time to think for yourself, saying the Kaddish is something wrote, you're thanking God for everything that you have and it then gives you time to think about something other than what you're thinking about, right? So yes, of course, when you first lose someone that you love, you've got, you've got enough grief. Nobody has to tell you, you should be grieving right now. You should be, you know, it's coming from within you anyway. And so the Kaddish being something very rote and, th and, and praising God gives you the time to then think about what's going on. Um, there's a local paper here, the, Jew the Jewish Standard uh, in Northern New Jersey. It's the Federation's paper that they put out every week. And there's the editor, this woman, Joanne Palmer is her name. And her daughter died in a horrific crash, a car crash, very sudden. Uh, her daughter was, you know, um, was an, uh, an adult already, um, died in this horrific crash. And um, she said to me, I, I can't say the Kaddish. I can't praise God. Like I, I look at these words and I think I can't praise God when he took my child from me. Like there's no excuse for that. There's no reason for that. Nobody can tell me that there was a good reason why this happened. And she said it took her years and years to be able to say the Kaddish without cursing the entire time. Mm -hmm. And um 
And then I said, well, what was the turning point then? When, when could you actually say it? She said, well, because it's something that I can say, you know, I know it by heart, I can say it in my head. I was able to compartmentalize my daughter's death from praising God as two different things. And, um, and that's when she was able to recite the Kaddish. So many, many different reasons, many, many different things. But, um, and I urge you to maybe, you know, if you're going to shul this week, ask your rabbi, why is it? Yeah. And, uh, and let's, you know, let's, let's reconvene next week and see what they say. Um, I, I like the, uh, my, my, my head likes the explanation that, well, we studied during a morning period and we said Kaddish after morning. So we just shortened it in the modern day. And we're just saying Kaddish now. I like that explanation a lot better. Um, uh, but I'll let you leave it to your own interpretation. So it does say at the end, though, it does, you know, to create peace on high and bring peace to all of us and to all Israel. And I think that that makes you feel better that, you know, your life will go on and be at peace, you know. So. Yeah. I do like that. And um, that's a line that is even at the end of Oseh Shalom, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, I, and so I like that. I like that, you know, when I, I like that when you're done davening the Amida, which is like the biggest part of your prayer part that you're saying, okay, I've prayed for all these things. I've prayed for good health. I've prayed for, you know, Parnassa, which is like, you know, um, your, your living wage. And you've played, prayed for all of these things that you wanted to pray. You've thanked God for things that have gone right. You've requested things from God that you hope don't go wrong, you know, those types of things that at the end you're saying, you know, uh, it's, you know, you should make peace on everyone, you know, and make peace on me and everyone, everyone around me. And let's say I'm into that. Right. So I really, I do like that. And I think that, yeah, at the end of the Kaddish, you know, when you're, if you're, if you're introspective about the, the, the person that you're mourning, um, then at the end, you're like, but I really do want peace for everyone, you know? And, um, you know, I say that about what happened to us this week at Michigan State, that 50,000 students in the school and only three people died and only five people were injured is kind of a miracle in itself that, you know, and, and I, and I feel terrible for the eight families that are going through these crazy, you know, these crazy things, but only eight people were physically affected, you know, out of 50,000, uh, plus, plus faculty and staff and all these other people that were there. So, um, so, you know, I do think to myself, thank God, and let's bring peace upon everyone, you know, for that as well. Um, you know, and that's, you know, the, the, the lingering thought of what we have. One more thing I want to say about mourning. Once you, uh, once you bury the person, the mourning becomes about you, right? The mourner. And so because everything becomes about you and not about the deceased, this prayer is about God. And so you're not selfish 24 seven for, the seven days, the 30 days, the 11 months, you know, that sort of thing. You're bringing God into this because God is part of your world. So that's- um, Is it more to reestablish your relationship so that, you know, one is very upset when somebody passes away and this is to bring you back to say, you know, I'm here, um, don't forget, and I'm here to help you, maybe? Yeah, I like that. I like that, that maybe don't forget that I'm here for you. Don't forget that, you know, I exist and you can pray to me and you can, you know, that sort of thing. And, you know, and again, our lives, our lives wean and, uh, you know, wean and wane around our, 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 our faith. Sometimes we're, you know, we're going to synagogue every week. We're going once a month. We're going once a year. We're, you know, that sort of thing. We're very involved. We're not involved, you know. Um, and so I think that at any time in, in that cycle of ups and downs of your religiousness, you can say the Kaddish, remember that God is at the center of it all and, you know, and, and then center yourself around that. I agree. 
I like that, Judy. I was just going to say that Judaism's focus on the preciousness of life in general, and I always think about it as a reminder that life is for the living and to focus on life, and this is kind of a reinforcement of that focus, the, the preciousness of of life and going on in that way. Right, right, and that God is part of it. Yeah, no, I do like that. All right. Well, Shabbat Shalom, everyone, and um, I will see you next week, 1.30, and uh, I will send out a recap, and hopefully the other people that were supposed to join us um, you know, hopefully they missed the link or they just couldn't come today and they'll join us next week. But even if we just have this crew, it's a nice group. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Bye everybody. And take care. I hope the healing of this goes smoothly for you and your son and the rest of your family. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.